Los Nachos Amigos coming to you live from Austin, Texas. Or at least half of us are. Uh, this is Record Breakers. And technically you're not live, but live to tape. I'm Peter Ray of your man window plan. Here literally with me. Right here. Just creepily trying to stick our hands in each other's uh, yeah. We got Patrick. Hola. Uh, we've got Brett. The bumper sticker said. If you don't like my IQ, fuck you. <laughs> and we've got Drew. I'm, I'm going to start this out by saying I looked over at my Twitter and realized it was telling me I should follow John Carmack, Brenda Romero, and Alex Jones. And I'm <laughs> real confused <laughs> as to how those are the three that Twitter thinks I should follow. Just For 25 years, they've been growing babies inside of cows. Yeah. Uh, I, I like video games and politics. You should follow these people. Thanks, Twitter. Uh, maybe uh, I'm, I'm thinking I got the next suggestion. They're probably going to just suggest you John Tron at some point. Uh, I think I already but, followed John Tron. Well, there um, you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but beyond this, all right, beyond getting into that, we're talking about music. This is what we're here for. We're here to share music with each other. Uh, and the provider of the music this week uh, is me. Uh, I'm providing a nice uh, another cool hip hop album recently released uh, by a the legendary a tribe called Quests. It's like a fish called Wanda. You say the whole thing. A tribe called Quests. Uh, and their latest album, we got we got it from here. Thank you for your service. Uh, it is a really cool album. Is the Tribe Called Quest is a is a legendary, well well renowned band, well renowned crew of hip hop. Been around for well, uh, was around a long a while ago. It was around for a while. Wasn't around for a while, and now are around. Of course, now minus a member, uh, as this is the last album uh, featuring uh, the late uh, Fife Dog, uh, released pom- posthumously. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll ask the remote people first. Well, actually, let me, I'll, Patrick, what were your expectations? So, um, I am not intimately familiar with A Tribe Called Quest, but I had listened to this album at least once or twice after it came out, along with, uh, you know, Midnight Marauders and Low End Theory before. They're, they're one of those hip hop I very much appreciate, but isn't like in my regular rotation. So I knew, I know this era of hip hop. I kind of knew a little bit of the story that this was like basically a reunion slash farewell album all at the same time. And, uh, that it would probably be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brett, what were your expectations coming into this album? Um, I had a friend, uh, when I lived in Pennsylvania, who uh, ended up being best man at my wedding, but uh, we would cruise around, and uh, he would have some uh, uh, n- not original pressings of albums in his car, um, and some of them would have mix uh, mixes of uh, a tribe called Quest in it. Um, but that was back when I was full on into punk rock, so I <laughs> avoided it. Um, I. I can't say that i've really heard much since 2004 but uh you know <laughs> they haven't you released know. anything since then so you're safe yeah but well you know i i i the of the pieces uh that that, that make this album there there's some things that i like and there's some things i'm familiar with yeah um yeah true what were your expectations coming into this album um i have listened to uh hip-hop and rap for a bit here so i sort of a tribe called quest is one of those groups where if you start digging into sort of influences of modern uh practitioners of the genre a tribe called quest comes up a lot um so it's one of those things where i have went back and dived into some of their stuff but i've never done the full album front to back sort of i'm gonna sit down here and listen to this whole thing like i have done with some others so i was sort of excited to do that especially with knowing that this is sort of the last we're gonna get from five dog Mm -hmm. um yeah this album is is a 
is a uh, very much fitting from a, 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 a legendary kind of old school uh, group like a tribe called Quest. Uh, it has older old school influences uh, from the sound that they came in with uh, that they brought back. It has newer influences with some nice modernization in there, but it's very 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 classic like. Uh, bringing forward and modernizing the, a little bit of an old school hip hop sound. Uh, it's, you know, has really cool, you know, it's, re- it's very sample heavy. Uh, it's very, uh, lyrical, fo- lyrically focused, um, and flow focused being, uh, le- you know, more, more soothing flow and more kind of like, uh, head bop sound. Uh, it does vary quite a bit. It does vary in, in the tone and the, and the kind of the, the sounds quite a bit. Um, but yeah, but this is definitely a kind of more taking an old school hip hop sound and growing it up a bit and, and maybe modernizing a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to kind of say it a little bit better. Uh, Patrick, what would you, how would you describe this album musically? I think you really hit the nail on the head where like this is simultaneously like a throwback to like golden age, early nineties hip hop when it was DJs and samples were almost like the, you know, DJ samples, and maybe a synthesizer on top of that to make the tracks, but it didn't feel old. It was modernized. Well, it, it, it wasn't a, a lot of times when a group who hasn't been together for 10, 15, 20 years gets back together, you end up with like this nostalgia trip and and it can be fun but like it just sounds like they made another record like it was the last time they made one whereas i feel like this maybe in part because they brought in a lot of collaborators on tracks and they were pretty adventurous and it's a pretty sprawling record it's you know it's a full hour long it's 16 tracks mm-hmm. and there's it's not a lot of filler it's it 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 goes places and tries things that you get something that very, very much would not sound terribly out of place, you know, in, in, you know, 1994, but also like has modernized it and brought it sort of into a new era and very much took the ideas that made Tribe Called Quest so influential among certain corners of the hip hop community, you know, being very socially conscious and, and having, having a, a message in their music and, and having it mean something. Uh, brought that into, you know, the current state of things. Mm-hmm. You know, basically, you know, this this album very much sounds like it was recorded in, you know, late 2015, early 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett, how would you describe this album musically? What would be the themes on it to cut your attention? Well, to be honest, uh, th- this album reminds me immediately of uh, of the uh, music that they play from time to time when they're changing modes in Salty Bet. Uh, the, the, the beats, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the strange orchestration and instrumentation that's thrown on top of just a simple beat. Like, uh, you know, the, the, you know, they, they take the break in a song and they spin it on one record while they cue up the beginning of the break on the other one while a guy dances on cardboard in front of you. Um, but no, it's, it's actually like pretty, pretty well done. Um, to the point where it, it, it sounds, uh, very, very f- like it, it's not contrived. Um, it's not something that's just, you pushed, you found the, the tape that you, you put into the software thing and you hit the, the, the button with the arrow to make it play. Um, it sounds like something that somebody has made a, a, a crafted beat, a bespoke hobby grade beats, yo. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, in, and mother that, that is for, for, for a, an album where you have the vocals and you have the beat, like it, there's not, you know, you, you don't talk about the dude who's, you know, going crazy on the drums here um uh, you know like you would a, a rock and roll band but uh what's going on behind the microphone is 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 as important as the stuff that's going on on the beat um which which is kind of nice um by the way uh there's some long ass songs on here uh they don't get free um uh, there's no rush uh to 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 get to where they're going um the the long breaks uh and the repeated beats and the simplicity of the beats 
um, make it a, an album that uh, is probably designed for people to either dance to or to uh, um, consume stuff and hang out while uh, and listen to <laughs> um, and, and whatnot. So it's one of those kind of albums. Um, yeah. And there's also a dose of the baby making uh, stuff going on too. But we'll we'll get into that as we go through. But you know yeah. it 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 I. It's one of those things I wish I could define it by it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I use it as the, you know, because it's kind of a, it's a thing and it's, it's their kind of thing. So, yeah. Uh, Drew, how would you describe this album musically? It's fun that you guys bring up modernizing uh, the 90s thing and like they're a group from the 90s and a tribe called Quest. In, like in my mind, if you think back, you think of like groups like A Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul doing the whole like mixing really like in depth musicality on the beats more so than other groups of their time, right? And you have other people doing it now. Um, you have more modern groups that are still doing that sort of thing and changing it up and modernizing it. So when you bring back a tribe called quest, they can't just sit on their laurels. They have to prove why they were the ones doing it in the first place. Right. And I think what this one, they did, I'm um, spoiler alert for the D block. Um, but in the studio, they really shine because they think out their production quality, their use of features, their, musicality in the actual production of the beat i think it's really really fantastic um there's some crazy features on this record and it's <laughs> some crazy use of like the list just right here. different uh, bits and different parts yeah um there's and, there's andre folks 2000. like andre 3000 and jack white <laughs> are both on this record elton john is on this record at the point like they use and it, it to me like those type of things like being able to pull out like oh yeah they use Kendrick Lamar and Jack White on the same record like it's because you don't get that sort of thing unless the people in the studio like actually care about music it would just be like you just get another big name rapper and that would be that, right? But they're pulling out weird names from this way and that way. Buster Rhymes is on. Yeah, motherfucking Buster Rhymes and Jack yeah. White. Collaborators. <laughs> Record Breakers well, provides. Yep. Yeah, Buster so, like, Rhymes makes a little more, more sense because he was always a collaborator of Tribe. Oh, tri yeah. Vocals. Buster Rhymes has been around Tribe like, Quest forever. Yeah. Like, him and Q-Tip are tight. I'm pretty sure. But um, the, yeah, the, 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 but it's still how, funny how to does hear that... him and then, like, Jack White. Like... Yeah, is that emulsify? Like, that, that's some musical mayonnaise right there. Like... I'm not like, a fan of Jack White, but, like, that's dope. Like, that's super dope. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, but then, like, also, it's a tribe called Quest, and nobody stated it, so I'm going to put it out there. Like, they, the lyrics themselves and the themes of that are very politically driven which is weird to me because in, in your head you sort of think of okay certain genres have certain like cornerstones that like they were known for being like a socially conscious political like group in that genre and they got big and were like billboard charting even doing that which like a lot of political groups can't do um and it reminded me the first group when we were doing alpha tests of this was what the clash brought by yes. PD. so <laughs> the fact that pd is also bringing back a tribe called quest like really felt like a weird full circle moment yeah. for me <laughs> on, on the show but yeah it's the album really does a lot to really make it feel like yeah, no, the we stopped with the love movement in ninety eight, but like we we still got this, we still own this space, we're still comfortable with what we do. And that's yeah. Kind of cool. we, we, we we got it from here. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, it's 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 really cool stuff. Yeah, and all these features and like all these different tracks, like uh I mean 
the different tracks that you can pull from, obviously, it starts off very, very cool with the space program. Uh, it's just a cool song with a cool instrumental and a cool vibe to it. And you go things like, uh, you know, like We the People, uh, which uh, I believe is the single or at least the one, the first that has a, on the list that has its own Wikipedia article. So I presume it's a single. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the first single. Uh, but it's also a dope track with, uh, with, some really cool lyrics uh the one another one that stands out for me uh going back another really kind of i believe i remember yeah it's an emotional lyric the one lost somebody <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> live to tape everybody live to tape uh, oh excuse me uh lost I, somebody. I, 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 yes <laughs> uh yes <laughs> oh, God, a, a very oh, very cool emotional song very kind of a, a moving song uh yeah and but going to the the main one yeah those crazy features uh the solid wall of sound which just kind of the vibe and the sound and like how the you know how the features and how the the vocals work on that track i mean it is that is the song that has jack white and elton john uh doing providing vocals of course with Buster Rhymes as, as in there um which is how could nice, you tell <laughs> uh you sure? with the next juxtaposition with like the the hook with the, the very much uh, the Ellen John vocals uh that are very recognizable for the for the hook uh was really fantastic on that one and it's just like that solid wall of sound like yeah was was really cool. I had a how, really how cool was how was that? A solid really wall of sound. My new ringtone, everybody. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Patrick, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Uh, I'll keep it short and simple. Uh, we the people. I love the music on this one. Uh, it's got a great, great bass line, but you know, classic sample drums. This is musically speaking, some like this is how I like my hip hop outside of the roots, which are kind of the exception to the the exception just because they do it live. But I like sample heavy hip hop, and this is like this is it executed by the masters kind of thing. Like this is people who have literally been doing it since that idea really took hold and, and kept, kept improving at it. And it's, it's a really like lyrically intense song. Like it is, it is not for the faint of heart. Um, and then Conrad Tokyo, which just, uh, it, it was like the music on it. It was so perfect. I don't even know how to describe it. It, it made me feel like I'm in some sort of like, you know, post apocalyptic Japanese anime sort of thing. Like it just, there was the, it, it, in a weird way, like it just sounded like driving some ridiculous car in the middle of the night in, in wasteland Japan in, you know, 2080. It, I don't know. I'm a weird person, but that was the place it took me. Um, really, really good, like percussive rapping, which is something I like. And I like, I like that because it can act as sort of a second rhythm on top of, on top of the beat. And you get kind of the two rhythms playing, playing with each other. And that really did it. Um, plus there was some Jack White noodling on it because apparently Jack White's friends with these guys. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, pretty far from the world's biggest jack white fan but i appreciated uh, his work on this record just because it added a little uh a little extra something to it mm-hmm. uh brett what would be some of the key tracks for you well uh solid wall of sound um you know you can't go wrong with smelton john um you know it the the amount of repetition in the beginning is is, is a little worrisome uh, in my first listen through i was like man this is uh this sure is uh, taking his time, which I later found out they take their time on this album. They, they don't get in a hurry. But uh, when it opens up, the piano comes in. Um, it really takes off. Uh, you know, again, I never thought I'd hear Jack White and Busta Rhymes together. Uh, you know, but <laughs> record breakers, everybody. Um, it's not. It's not Snoop Dogg and Willie Nelson, um, but it's it's pretty close. Um, uh, Dis Generation. Um, you know the the. 
just you know there there's so many people credited on this track um and you can tell when you listen to it um the back and forth is is pretty fantastic um and, and you get some like great like next level final form buster rhymes like uh you know the I, I I imagine that Buster Rhymes moves in like 16 frames a second or whatever, like music videos in 1996. <laughs> but uh, yes, again, I I forgot that I needed that in my life. Um, and uh, you know, enough exclamation point. Um, that's a song about banging. Um, and uh, <laughs> that's noteworthy. Um, but, you know that. There are all sorts of great songs on this album, but th- those were the ones that really stuck with me and I could get emotional about. But like, yeah, um, th- there's a lot going on in this album. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on in this album. Uh, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Um, The Space Program. The Space Program, what's great about that to me is just it's such a smooth song. The the melody in the keys is smooth. Like the beat in the back is smooth. And then you have this, the rhyme scheme and the flow of the actual lyricism comes off with smoothness, but the staccato bits in the rhyme scheme hit at the right moment in each, which was like, just seemed really, really well thought out. Um, and sort of get you into that. Oh, wait, they probably thought through the actual composition of this record. And while, while I understand, um, probably should talk a little bit about something like this generation or solid wall of sound for the insanity of, of Mr. Buster Run. Um, I, the kids, cause I have to mention kids because I love 103,000. I think Outkast is one of those things in hip hop that's just, it makes the world a better place when Outkast makes music or is doing things. Andre 3000 is one of the most recognizable voices in hip hop. I don't remember if we've done an Outkast album or not. And if we haven't, that's a shame. Um, Dude had a cartoon on Cartoon Network. (laughs) Yeah. Andre 3000 is a weird cat and I love him for it. Um, And then the killing season. Um, the features in this track, oh god, um, like you have Consequence, Taylor Quali, and Kanye West all on the same track, and it all works, and it works really well. Um, and it just, there's a lot of, like I said in in the uh, A Block, there's a lot of features on this track. Um, they, they didn't go, uh, platinum without features. Um, but you know what, <laughs> when they use features, they use it well. And I think this uh, song sort of proves that. Yes. Uh, thank you for laughing at my lame joke. Both of you. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> um, we work too much together. We, 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 we have been doing this so long that the, the, even when I get a joke that is dumber than I expect, it still makes me laugh <laughs> because it's not, it, it is, it is that much more dumb than it should have been. But yes, yes. I thank you. Drew. Um, but yes. Uh, let's bring it back around the horn. Talk, talk about some conclusive thoughts. All right, Patrick, your conclusions on this album. Uh, this is one of the good ones. Um, if you are the sort of person who is too young to have been around for a tribe called Quest, I actually think this might be a great place to start because, because it is a little more modern. It, uh, it's probably a little more accessible than, than some of the classic stuff. Uh, but also like the, you know, I, I, the thought of this, like it kept striking me like this is, like the sort of bittersweetness of this record that it is a reunion and a farewell. Just, you know, they, they got back together. They made this great thing. And then, you know, Fife Dog, one of, one of the core members dies and they like, you know, we're going to finish this and put it out there. And like, it's done. This is it. This is all you're ever going to get. But at the same time, like, God damn, they went out on a high note. Which doesn't happen very often. I mean, how many bands last album do they really get to say, you know, goodbye to their fans and put out, you know, really great work? Mm-hmm. I think Kiss has done it three times. 
Kiss has Sorry. never put out a great <laughs> album. No, they they put out Kiss three hasn't final even put out a good tours. album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, farewell no, tour, I, reunion tour, farewell on. tour, reunion tour. I would Chuck, put out. Fuck. I would put out that Kiss hasn't put out a record. They've put out three songs that they just repeat throughout every record. Yeah, hey, they're covering the the great topics of Detroit banging. Yes, uh, and rock and roll. And the way in the direction in which you lick. Yes. Uh, Brett, what would be your conclusion on this album? All right. Well, um, this is something that I will go back to again. Um, I'll tell you a little bit right there. I am normally the one that says, eh, I'm, I'm good. But no, um, th- this passes the uh, 105 point inspection and it is. Uh, uh, it, it is now a holder of the Brett Hibbard certified dank snarf of approval. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, hold on, hold that back up, please. Just snarf, but um, Damn, the you snarf have of snarf approval. On a stick, you fuck. Okay. Um, and uh, if you ain't, uh, listen to it. Um, it's 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 pretty okay. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Uh, Drew. What would be your conclusions on this album? A Tribe Called Quest is sort of a mainstay in like hip hop circles for a reason. Their music always comes up for a reason. Um, and that's because they put a lot of thought into it and they do it very well. Um, they, there's not in mainstream hip hop you don't usually get the sort of quote unquote jazz rap sort of thing. You don't really get like a lot of chart topping diggable planets uh, or De La Soul out there. Like you usually don't get that because it's something that's more of a niche thing. Right. Um, but Tribe Called Quest does it and does it really, really well. Um, this album is, yeah, it's a, while it's sad, um, whenever any genre loses somebody that's such a mainstay and such like a cornerstone of it. Um, it is a high note for five dog to go out on, um, that this is sort of his sort of like curtain call of an album is really something special because this album is something special. It's, it's damn good. Um, yeah, you can't really say much more than that. Has, yeah. like, it, it reminds you that Buster Rhymes is great, and it let me know that Kendrick Lamar's actual last name was Duckworth. So yes. I can't really <laughs> be mad at this album. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is a, a fantastic, long journey of an album. It is a it is an experience. You get to sit down with it. Um, I'm sure it is it is fantastic to, to listen to while on the marijuana uh though i do not partake myself uh i don't think anybody in this in this podcast partakes uh but we still enjoyed it anyway so you can you, can you don't enjoy. know you'll <laughs> never know yeah uh <laughs> what are you a cop is... if you're a cop you have to tell me <laughs> no, my, no. my motto is hey 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 smoke weed every day Yes, Drew. Drew, an advocate for marijuana <laughs> yes. all, all the time. Yes. It's, it's one of oh, my this defining traits. Yep. Uh, yeah. got, that, got that oil in my vape rig, though. That's right. <laughs> mad, mad dabs. Uh, but yes, this album, fantastic, diverse, really cool, classic, but yet modern. Like, uh, really great samples, really great, uh, like musicality in the instrumentals, uh, really great rapping all throughout, really great, uh, just lyrics, lyrical content, uh, flow. Just, it, there, there's so much of this that just comes together. In a, in a really great way to complete a really fantastic big magnum opus of uh of an album uh yeah tribe called quest uh really fantastic album all right now that we have our thoughts out of the way we get to our haiku reviews we have the main event of the evening why we're all here why why I'm sitting on this couch next to 
to Patrick over here. Uh, haiku reviews. Uh, let's start. Let's start, with Patrick. Patrick, what is your haiku? A modern throwback, more than a nostalgia trip. Worthwhile farewell. Hmm. Uh, Brett, what is your haiku? A gift from Petey. And this album stole my heart with really great beats. Mm-hmm. Flip mode squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew, what is your haiku? Hip hop royalty with a beautiful swan song. Rest in peace, Fife Dog. Yes. Uh, now my haiku. Uh, conscious hip hop sound with plenty of old school vibes. And something to say. Uh, yeah. Those are our thoughts on A Tribe Called Quest. Remember, it's like a fish called Wanda. You say, you say the whole thing. A Tribe Called Quest. Uh, you can, of course, find it on our Spotify playlist. Play Record Breakers, the home game. Play along at home. Keep you know, follow along with the episodes. Do your homework. Uh, on next week's record, uh, next week's record is provided by Patrick. Patrick, what do you got? Uh, I'm diving back into the metal of my college years. Uh, this time with no screaming. Uh, Nevermore, Dead Heart in a Dead World. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> So enjoy that discussion next week. But that's the end of this is now. And you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Patrick is at Swagger. Brett is at Hibbity Bear Bird. H I B B I T O I B I B A B A R D. Drew is at X Juicifer X. I'm a PD Rave. The show's at four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers. Recordbreakerspodcast.com. Recordbreakerspodcast at gmail.com. If you want to email us, rebelli.net for this and the other show for now. Uh, well, and the other other show, uh, which will be periodical whenever there's actual content to be worth putting on. But we did premiere uh, pre show the show. With the first episode, which was the uh, accompanied a couple of weeks ago by uh, accompanied the episode where we were talking about Hulk Hogan, we had a little pre-show of the show. We talked about wrestling, so check out pre-show of the show. A little fun thing. We'll do it periodically. Uh, but yeah, check that out over there. Rebelli TV on YouTube and all the other things. So, until next time, hasta los huevos. Toodaloo.